Okay, we're looking at fundamentals of chemistry now. This is the basics. This is this is the foundations, the stuff that you really need to know. If you understand this stuff, then the rest of chemistry will be okay for you. If you don't understand a lot of this stuff, then the rest of chemistry is going to be a nightmare for you. So it's worth spending some time with this stuff. Okay, let's get going. So first of all, we're looking at atoms. We're not going to go into this in great detail because um, I've done another video uh, called drawing an atom. So if you want this in detail, um, then go and have a look at that video, drawing an atom. And I, I use the analogy of a Lego brick, an atom being like a Lego brick. And the reason I do that is because there are there are certain similarities. You can't snap an individual Lego brick apart, and you can't snap an individual atom apart. Atom, a tom, means cannot split. Now, technically, yes, you can. If you're going to be pedantic, you can split an atom as you do in a hydrogen bomb, but for the purposes of this, an atom is an individual Lego brick. It's an individual unit, and you can stick it to other atoms and build models out of it. And then you can break those models apart and build new models. And that's basically what chemistry is in its most simplistic form. It's, it's playing with Lego. So let's have a look at one of, these, um, one of these atoms. In the middle bit, you've got a thing called the nucleus. Um, and in the nucleus you find protons and you find neutrons. Uh, protons have got a plus charge and neutrons have got no charge at all. So the overall charge of a nucleus of an atom is plus. All atoms have a positive charge in the nucleus. Whizzing around the outside, you've got these negatively charged things called electrons. Um, and they are responsible for things like electricity and a lot of the bonding. As I said, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on this. If you want to watch the, the video on drawing an atom, go and seek that one out. Um, all I'll say, to finish up on atoms, on this bit anyway, is that if an atom loses an electron, it loses a negativity. Right, if you lose your negativity, what do you become? You become positive, right? If you lose your negativity, you can think of it like a mood, like your mood. If you lose your negative mood, you become positive, you become happy. Well, when an, when an atom loses a negative, it becomes positive. Okay? And if an atom loses two electrons, it becomes two plus. It becomes what we call an ion. Um, what happens if an atom gains an electron? You can guess this for yourself. If you gain negativity, if you gain a negative electron, you become more negative yourself and you form what's called a negative ion. So, how is this, how is this looked at? How is an atom described on the periodic table? Um, you've got the letters, and we'll go into what they are in a minute, but the B E stands for beryllium. This is an atom of beryllium here. The smaller number of the two, now I'm, I'm a bit wary about saying the top number, because on different periodic tables, whether it's American or English, they, the numbers are different, the numbers swap round. Sometimes the little number is on the bottom and sometimes the little number is on top. I will say the smaller number. The smaller number of the two is the proton number. So there's four protons. And you can see those four little red protons all positively sitting there in the nucleus. There they are. The nine, and don't worry about the decimal point, don't worry about the 9.0122. We'll, sort, we'll, we'll talk about that in another video. But we round up or down. So, so in this case, we're just going to call it 9. The 9 is the mass of the entire nucleus. That whole middle bit, how much does that whole middle bit weigh? Well, it weighs 9. It's got 9 bits to it. If 4 of those 9 are protons, then the rest must be neutrons. Okay, so if 4 of those 9 are protons, then there must be 5 neutrons to make it up to 9. Uh, that 4, I should have mentioned as well, that 4 is also the electron number. So, 4 protons, 4 electrons, and 5 neutrons to make it up to 9. Okay, so that's atoms. Let's have a look at this periodic table. I like to describe this as the Lego set of the universe. It's all the different Lego bricks that you've got to play with to build anything in the known universe. So hydrogen and oxygen make water. Those two Lego bricks make about 70 odd percent of a human being, of you. You are mostly constructed of hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, so this is the periodic table. Uh, I'll do a future video in, in much more depth on the periodic table. Okay, when you join atoms together, you get molecules. 
and there are different types of molecules. So we're talking about models now. We're building models out of our Lego bricks. Now, <clears throat> there's one called an element, and an element is made up of only one type of atom. It's pure. So an example is diamond. Diamond is only made of carbon atoms. That's it. There is nothing else, just carbon. It's pure, so we call it an element. Graphite's the same. Graphite's just made of carbon as well, but you can see in, on this diagram that it's arranged in sheets. Um, and this is one of the reasons why graphite in your pencil can make marks on your paper. <clears throat> because as you run your, pe your pencil over your paper, the graphite comes off, the carbon layers come off onto your paper. So there's, this is two examples of elements. So oxygen O2, that's, that's an element, it's pure, it's only got oxygen in it. If we have something that's got more than one type of atom in it, so for example silicon dioxide, it's got silicon atoms and it's got oxygen atoms in it. It's not pure, it's a different thing. It's not a mixture, but it's, it's what we call a compound. So that's an example of a compound. Let's have a look at chemical symbols. Magnesium. The, the chemical symbols, um, if there's two letters, and the first one is uppercase and the second one is lowercase, then that's one atom. So Mg, that's one atom. Um, and that makes sense. So it's not little m, little g, or big M, big G. It's big M, little g. So if you see that, that is one atom. What about this example here? We've got a big C and then a big O, uh, uppercase C and an uppercase O. That's two separate things. That's carbon monoxide. There's a carbon atom joined to an oxygen atom. So that is a molecule. Mg, capital M, small g, that's an atom. Capital C, capital O, that's a molecule, carbon monoxide. If the O was small, that would be an atom of cobalt. Okay? Um, these make sense. Mg for magnesium, that makes sense. CO for cobalt, that makes sense. There are some that don't seem to make sense. PB, for example, is uh, is lead. Now, why would PB be lead? Well, it comes from Latin. It, the Latin for lead is plumbinium. Um, there, there's Latin, uh, there's Greek, um, there, there's other sort of areas where some of these came from. Uh, Argentium, for example, is silver. Okay, let's move on. <coughs> Covalent bonding. We're still talking about sticking these atoms together. One of the ways that happens is covalent bonding. Now, again, I have done a video on covalent bonding. Search through my videos. Find the one on covalent bonding if you want me to go into more detail. But basically, covalent bonding is sharing electrons. Now, do you remember what charge I said the nucleus of an atom has got? Well, if you look at this diagram, you can see it's plus. We've got these two atoms are sharing an electron. They've got one electron each and they're sharing them. This is because atoms want a full outer shell. They want a full, that circle is called a shell, and the first shell can hold two. So these two are achieving that by sharing. So all you need to know, covalent bonding is the joining together of two atoms by sharing electrons. And these two negatives are attracted to both of the positives and that keeps that those atoms stuck together with, with this electrostatic force. Next one, ionic bonding. Again, there is another video on ionic bonding. Have a look at it if you wanted this in more detail. This time, a lithium, in, in this example, a lithium is donating an electron to the fluorine. It's giving it away. That second shell disappears and lithium has two in its first shell. That's exactly what lithium wants. Fluorine, in the second shell, the the fluorine can hold eight, so it's desperate for one more electron. So lithium says, what's best for both of us? I'll give you this outside electron. I'll have two, I'm happy, and you can have eight, you're happy. But what happens in that process? He's giving a negative electron away. Now, do you remember what happens? What happens when you give a negative away? You become positive. Fluorine is getting another negative, so it's going to become negative. So we get a lithium plus ion, plus one, and we get a fluorine minus ion, minus charge, and what do opposites do? They attract. So they stick together, again, there's an electrostatic charge, they stick together, <coughs> opposites attract, so that's called ionic bonding. Okay, nearly there. <coughs> Chemical formulas. You've all seen these, very straightforward. 
The confusing thing is the number goes after the thing that it's referring to. So, for example, if you were writing a shopping list and you wanted to buy five bananas, you'd write five bananas, right? You'd write the number and then the thing you wanted. Well, in chemistry, it's done slightly different just to make it difficult for you. The number is written after the thing. So in H2O, the 2 is, is referring to the hydrogen, not the oxygen. Okay, So that's two hydrogens and one oxygen. Carbon dioxide, CO2. If there's no number next to it, then it means one. <clears throat> now there's no number next to that C, so that means there's one carbon atom and there's two oxygen atoms. The number goes after the O. <clears throat> H2SO4, that's uh, uh, sulfuric acid, two hydrogens, one sulfur because there's no number next to it, and four oxygens. And HNO3, that's nitric acid, one hydrogen, one nitrogen, three oxygens. That should be fairly straightforward. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Uh, chemical formulas. There are times when you see some brackets and things start to get a little bit more complicated, but don't worry about it. Let's have a look at this one. Iron 3 hydroxide. Fe is iron. Again, uh, what, ferrous, ferric. That must come, it doesn't, it's not English. That, the derivation of that is not English, is it? Um, hydroxide. If you see an OH, it's called a hydroxide, and that tends to make things alkali, the opposite of acid. Now, the rule is you multiply everything in the brackets by the number out of the brackets. So we've got one iron, and then everything in those brackets is times by three. So we've got three oxygens and three hydrogens. And you can have a look at the iron two nitrate example as well. Okay. Right, time for you to have a go. Try these questions. Pause the video now. Unpause it, have a look at the answers, see how you did. Good luck.